Hello and welcome back to Insane Nightmare. Today I am going to be heading out to Trader Jen and seeing if she has any tier 6 jobs available in the wasteland. And I have Trader Jen already at tier 6 complete, so there's no real advantage to doing these. These are more just an aspect of finishing the series, uh, finding out, you know, how bad are Wasteland Insane Nightmare tier 6 jobs. So let's see what jobs Jen has. She has a tier 6 800 meters away to the south. Poppin Pilts Factory. Okay, that is going to be a scary one in Infested. I've not done it Infested yet. I've done it in the Wasteland before, but not in Infested one specifically. I have brought a great deal of shotgun shells. I have these stack boxes crafted. I might as well bring them. Uh, you never know how much ammo you might need to use to clear a tier 6, especially when you've never done it before. So let's fly over. Now, there's one very petty thing I want to get out of the way before I do this, because last time I did tier 6 jobs, I had a couple of people who were somewhat doubtful about the difficulty. You see, they said, if you were on insane difficulty, you would be taking more damage. Now, I didn't dignify these people with a direct response because that's what they want, and I'm assuming that they have left by now because that is how the internet works. These trolls, they look for attention and they don't find it. Their argument was that because I was taking less than 25 damage per hit, I was somehow not playing insane difficulty. Need I remind everyone, in the Alpha 21 Survival Guide, the series I was talking about, I was fucking wearing steel armor. Of course I was taking less than 25 damage. That was the point of the steel armor. I am now wearing a merely military armor. 56% damage resistance. Of course, that explanation would not have satisfied the people in question, um, because that is how internet trolls work. They're brain dead. But let's be honest, when I didn't immediately respond to them in a comment, they went away and annoyed someone else. But to curb that comment that I could get this time, and maybe for the people who genuinely don't know the game very well and genuinely are curious as to why I'm taking so little damage compared to what Insane Difficulty should be, it's the armor. I'm wearing good armor. Let's start the tier 6 infestation in the wasteland on Insane Nightmare so that I can still be called a noob every third video by a person who can barely string that one word sentence together. Okay, there's three cops in this room. And I can't get to one of them. Wait, can I? Oh, now I'm thinking with portals. I'm not going to be able to get a headshot on him, though. Can I reach that bag? No. Okay, well, I'll need to remember that's there then. Now, this room on my left tends to be a pretty scary one, as well as that room on my left. But if I take it nice and slow, turn off my helmet light. I assume there's enough ambient light in the POI we'll still be able to see anyway. Let's take a step inside. Ooh, and there's a hole in that door now. Gives me ample opportunity to do this shit. Hmm. I'm not sure what part of his body I'm seeing. Ah, that door is left one hit. Okay. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. Was not good. We may need to resort to guns immediately. Hmm. What happens if I break this instead? And then brought a couple of explosive arrows. At the exit sign. Yeah, just draw them all over and use explosives. Now, the comments will call that cheese, but I don't care, so... It's an extremely effective way of playing. Okay. An interesting insight into the rest of the POI, which is going to be much harder to do so easily. Let's get rid of the explosive arrow. Okay, first room was a success though. Dealt with it relatively well. Now there's a gun rack here. I'm expecting terrible loot still. Level 6 spear. It would be good loot if I was using spears, I guess. Some iron arrows. Uh, ooh, a level 6 pick. It's not better than mine and it wouldn't really matter if it was because I'm already one-shotting everything I'm going to one-shot. So it can't get any faster anyway. Now there's a couple more zombies in this room, if you can believe it. Or not in this room, sorry, in this area. Well, I one-shot them both. Oh, they were both regular zombies. I'm so used to just never seeing regular zombies in POIs. They're usually all feral. Now there's some up on that staircase there. I wonder if it's possible to break that fabric blind with my bow. Now if it takes a couple of shots, I don't mind. I think it's starting to break. I'm in. Oh, is there only two zombies in there this time? Is it not usually more than that? Now, I'm 
reluctant to go in there because I feel like this is one of those rooms that triggers that and I want to try and find a smarter way around. I think you just have to try and force your way into this little area whilst keeping your stealth as low as possible so as to not activate the trigger. I really doubt it's going to work. Oh, okay. I think we just stepped into the trigger and that's why they're red, but I haven't activated them. So let's take another step. Try and avoid making it go up to like 16 because your character will take little shuffles. But then sometimes if you go too far with it too quickly, it'll take a full step. And that makes like 10 more noise than these little shuffles do. Here's one. I don't know which ones of these are alive and which ones are dead, but I think he's alive. Really? You wake up because I took a hit? I love this game so much. Oh, there's the last guy. Still, I have done that room a lot worse than that, so I'm quite happy with that. Coming out the other side with just an abrasion. Let my stealth go down, turn the helmet light off. Ah, yes. Forgot about these guys. Now there's a hole in that door. I try to avoid making unnecessary holes when holes are provided. But sometimes the game just tries to lure you into situations that simply aren't in your favour. And it is not conducive to survival to enter situations where you're not at an advantage. Some might call that cheesing. Those people are not relevant, because when an actual test of their intelligence develops, they will apparently just fucking die. So that's good, I don't have to really defend myself against those people. Nature will do it for me. Things usually spawn in one of these tanks. Not in that one this time though, it seems. Is that tank pre-opened? It is. That is good because it gives me a sneak attack opportunity. Bad because it gives them a first strike opportunity as well. If I come up here and I see, I can see the feet. How to handle this. There's another zombie behind it. And it is another feral white. The sneaky bastards. Oh, I should take a vitamin. I have them. It just stop me getting infected halfway through the POI. So we broke into this door. Are these zombies already spawned in though? Or do I have to go and activate an annoying little trigger? I do. So, how to do this whilst maintaining my life. Yep, immediately woke up by me opening the door. I was sneaking on top of a different thing entirely. I could not sneak up on them. The game just activates it anyway. Okay, there's the like, oh, he's radiated. Don't try and melee him. <laughs> why, is it, why is there a fucking snake? Oh, we're in the wasteland, I forgot. Oh, frame rate, hello. Ooh, zombie bear, get back inside. Take my chances with the shit that spawns in here. Yeah, that is not a fun room. I was standing completely still. Four ranks of stealth. You press to open the door and it simply activates all the zombies. There was no way without maybe smashing through blocks to sneak up on that. You saw I actually broke through this door, came here and looked down into that room and there was no zombies. If you go down there and open the door, the zombies spawn in. And because it forces you to make a certain amount of noise, you are immediately forced to fight them. Hey, people stop complaining. It's not complaining, it's pointing it out. If you think it's a negative, that's on you. It says a lot more about you. I didn't say it was negative. Did I? No. You think it's negative, then you think it's negative. I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm a tour guide. Okay? You think what I'm saying is negative, it's just merely a reflection of your inner soul. This is the room that sucks. Well, there's a great deal of them, actually. Oh, I never noticed this before. You can do a little sneak on this guy. Was there any more that are visible? Oh, I saw a flash of green there. Now see, is that a head? That was loud. Hmm. Okay, they leave that door one hit, good to know. So far, so cleared. Let's see. We can maybe try and emulate that success, depending on how aggressive this trigger wants to be. Full shot on him. Ooh, he head popped. 
wasn't even a kill, it was a head pop. That's how much damage that did. It was able to activate the decapitation mechanic on radiated zombies. That requires a lot of damage to be able to do. Alright, I see some green there. Who else is in that room? I mean, it's made of glass. Why would you not? If the zombies are this weird. What's oh, another uh, radiated businessman? Alright, that's the best that has ever gone for me. See, the small detail of doing tier 6s in the wasteland is I try considerably harder than I would if I was doing it normally. There is ammo down there, I don't care about it, but you might want to be aware of it, I don't know. Now this feels like a sneak grenade opportunity coming up. This is one of those areas, but we'll see what we can do before I resort to sneak grenades. But they really are the solution to all of life's problems. How can you put the zombies there and not expect me to sneak grenade? I have to. I have to. It's the law. I don't make the law. Let's head back inside here. Now, of course, they can just run across the ceiling, so we'll probably get to a more defended room here. There you are. One guy left. Where is he? Has he gotten a little bit lost? He has gotten a lot a bit lost. I ain't getting those arrows back. <laughs> Alright, so we've reached like a checkpoint in this PY before you actually start going underground. You can run back to your truck quite easily now if you decide to do that. I'm going to descend deeper into the belly of the pharmaceutical plant. Oh, hello. There's also one down there, apparently. Run away. I would like to lure this one out of the earshot of the other ones. Nope. Damn. That is some serious damage. You don't see that very often. Proper head pops on um, radiated zombies. It's, it's, it's infrequent, to say the least. Is this still a thing, or did they move it? Seems like it's maybe a possibility, but it's not this thing. Okay, they don't immediately get set on you, at least. Get. Made that noise too close to her. Nope. Ow. Great, so that door's left on two shots, now we know. Ah, that door's open now as well. That's great. Hello, yes. I am thirsty. Let me drink that coffee. Well, that was three shot by them. Jeez. I'm back to the door. You weren't using those knees anyway, right? One of them didn't turn up. He apparently didn't hear me. I think we're safe. Now, where does this fucking go? I don't remember that button and it scares me. Well, I can always run back to that other door. Yep, I'm going to run back to that other door now. See ya. What a nice room that is. Just a room with a button with a bunch of zombies in it. God, I love the shotgun buff. This is a loot room. I wonder if it's optional, though. Like, can you just leave this behind? And the game's just like, yep, that counts as cleared. Oh, an auger. Get one, but, you know. Still something. This isn't so bad so far. It's got a lot of fallback points in this POI. Some absolutely just... hilarious hack game design triggers in this one. I don't remember being as mad before. But what do you expect? This is Seven Days to Die. Hello. Okay, so it's night time, so I would now extra special with sprinkles on top not want to fire my gun, because it will cause a horde night, basically. But the thing is, is I know I'm going to have to anyway. So all I can really do is hope for the best and first aid kit up before that happens, so that I have pre-healing. But we can try the stealthy approach first. Don't immediately activate when I open the door. 
Fantastic. Oh, I see a head. Jeez. I lost 20 frames as soon as they spawned in. Where do I even start? Oh good, he's radiated. I'm going to run away now. I wonder if that's an actual proper valuable strategy. If I sneak away so effectively that he just loses me. And I sneak attack him again. Make no noise. Literally sitting on zero. Give him 25 seconds. I can maybe get another sneak attack in. <laughs> no one said I had to clear them quickly. Problem is, is I don't know which red dot he is now. Maybe he'll just be a little surprise for later and I should continue on. Achoo. It worked. They didn't hear me because I sneezed. Right. What happens if I just do this? It doesn't seem to affect the sleepers, but what about that one radiated zombie? He heard it. He doesn't see me. I'm a genius, kind of. Vaguely. Oh, that was a radiated one. Kill the other ones quick. <laughs> okay, so we've massively cleared this out, but there's still so many red dots. Hey! You good there, buddy? I think he was trying to jump down and he got a little bit stuck. Bunch of zombies outside trying to get inside, but that is not my problem right now. Thread the needle. I really want to test if you can... Oh, I'm going to get myself killed testing this. Oh, you can. He survived, I think. Hello there. Oh yeah, that's nice. Love that for me. Just a million more of them. Shoot one, let the bar go down. Shoot one, let the bar go down. Rinse and repeat. Hello there, glowy guy. You're gonna be a problem, aren't you? Hello there, even worse glowy guy. You're also gonna be a problem. Very quiet, chain the shots together. You'll die eventually. Run away. Jump. Jump. Okay. Temporarily solve that problem. That was the loudest thing in the universe and the zombie disappeared. Why did the zombie disappear? Where the- oh. Okay. He has some powers. Oh, one shot him, cool. Oh, there's so many more red dots, love that for me. I'm going to go into this main chamber and try and figure out what is happening. Ah, is he up here causing havoc now? Yeah, that wasn't incredibly intelligent, was it, friend? Fucking die, jeez. Okay, so, invested cash, now that we're not immediately under attack. Look at all this stuff. Furious Fists, Bow Hunters. We dropped some generic stuff. We got one shotgun turret bundle and an auto turret bundle. I dropped something, hang on. Electrical traps, I need these, so that's fine. And let me drop, like, well, I don't have to drop anything. I can put it in here. Open that up, bunch of 9 mil. I needed more SMG turrets. Level 6 Augur, it's the same as mine, I think, so. We will come back for more of this interesting loot later. I was kind of just hoping it would have more arrows, because I was concerned I was going to need more for that other guy. Stay down. Okay. Using guns is now a lot less dangerous. I will continue to try and stealth it, though. I mean, if you want me to bring the shotgun, I will. I mean, that's really the mistake most, you know, stealthy assassins make, is they don't bring an emergency shotgun. Anyone else? I 
I find the zombie sounds to be very distracting, so I try to clean them up when they're doing that kind of annoying noises in the background. Still only like three. Okay, nothing unusual then. Let's get a little bit of fortitude. We can now finish off living off the land. This seems like a scary room. I think most of them are now over here. You survived? Fine. I the old fashioned way. Well, that was honestly pretty easy. <laughs> For what it was, a tier 6 infestation in the wasteland with some absolutely abusive trigger rooms. I have most certainly had worse than that. Right, let me get out to my truck. Or I brought a gyrocopter, didn't I? Let me get out to my gyrocopter and I'll gather up all the loot I can from that final area there. Right, let's go and inspect this loot room. Right, let me grab the rest of the infested cash. Let me bash this open. Ah, I'll try and lockpick, but it really goes my way. Damn it. Frick. Ugh. What do we get for that then? Security camera bundle? Eh. What just fell off the side there? Oh, a wire tool. Decent little bit of iron there. Uh, some paper for money. Some money for paper. Ugh. Here's another treasure map. And yeah, the actual loot is usually complete and our dog shit. But the infested caches are usually quite nice. I can't say I was disappointed with mine. Need more scrapping slots. That'll do. I could do with going back and making more iron arrows. I did not get many of mine back. What's my game stage in this biome, by the way? 300. So, you know, like half of the maximum game stage. So that's pretty bad in terms of... Uh, the zombies that should be spawning in POIs, but honestly, I have done harder POIs. A regular tier 5 prison is worse than that. Hello, Jen. Yeah, that seems adequate for doing literally the hardest thing the game can make you do. By the way, there's no advantage to this nail gun being level 6. It just has more durability than the base one. It is exactly the same as the other ones. So I won't be taking that. I will be taking as my reward 25 forge steel. Um, do you have any more? No, all of those are to the east and to the north. The north being the snow biome, and the east being probably the forest biome. Eh, all these tier sixes honestly kind of suck. I wanted to do two, but I don't think we're getting that done today. I could definitely do some in the snow, but I don't want to do that right now. I want to keep it themed for the wasteland for this episode. But there's only two in the wasteland, and she doesn't seem to want to give me the other one in the wasteland, which is very unlucky. Right, so it's occurred to me, if I want to power my turrets, I'm going to need a generator bank, and I'm going to need engines to power it. Now, I obviously have this one, but this is my lights one, and I'm going to need gas as well, so we might have to do a bit of a scrapping trip, to be honest, which I don't often have to do, but it seems like it's going to be one of those occurrences so that'll give me something to do for the rest of the episode at least and before we leave i should explain the decorating i did in the last episode i had to cut it out because it was just too long the video was too long so you can see i've decorated the bottom room here with concrete metal floor classic ceiling and i did a nice red stripe because i wanted the rooms to look more distinct here this is like the bluish purple level and that's the red level we come up here into the main room it's just got this nice little lobby look. I've still not fully decorated it, obviously. I need to place furniture mainly, but it's, it's getting there. I forgot to do the garage at all. It just looks like this still. I'll fix it eventually. This room has a similar appearance. We went for this design out here. And the power room is pretty simple as well. And obviously the building, I just continued most of the paint jobs I had already done. So, I need to go and I need to add in the greenhouse later once I actually have the capability to make a farm. So I need to scrap cars. And the way to do that is not with a gyrocopter. I need to grab some repair kits. I've left them behind. So we're going to go out and hunt down a bunch of cars. Both for gas and for engines because I have none. I have been slacking on my engines actually and now that I want to do power I have to go out and get a bunch of them. I'm gonna go out and get like 12 of these motherfuckers. All right well I'll let you know how this trip goes. Oh hey a snow police car. 
But we have a bunch of uh, burned guys. Now then, I don't have lockpicks. It didn't actually make the noise, but it spawned zombies anyway. Why, why did it not make the noise? Maybe I broke... Oh, I did so much damage that it carried the damage over. Yeah, that's a thing. It still spawns the zombies, but it stops the annoying noise. What I mean there is if you do damage to a car that has, like, states, the damage will transfer on to the next layer. And the lock counts as a layer. And then there's a layer where the car has, like, all the lights. And then there's this final layer of the car where you can get all the juicy insides. And... I broke right through the lights, but it doesn't stop the zombie spawning, which kind of sucks, but hey, it's something. Also, I only have one engine so far. Oh, make it two. Heal that, Alex. Hey, another engine. And another one. And another one. This is much better luck than the last time I did this. The bear is about to make a decision. He does not know if he can cross the border. He has chosen to remain in his home. Another engine. I have not seen a level 6 battery in a while. Am I just getting bad luck or are they not a thing anymore? Another engine. Is that another engine? That may have been another engine. The UI bugged. Hey, a level 6 battery. So they do still exist. I've unlocked SMG turret. Crafting. I can make the rest of the SMG turrets I need now. Well, this just became a big old electrician episode. Another engine, we've got 10 of them. Another level 6 battery, nice. I think there's something wrong with your car, bro. Oh, hey, another snow police car. And run away. Hello, have you come to stop me from stealing from the police again? Oh, there's a bunch of bullshit going on over here. And there's a truck in here. Another level 6 battery. Oh, level 6 machete. Nice. Is it actually better than mine, though? 30 versus... Yeah, it's a little bit better. Oh, another engine. Okay, that's all we're getting out of this little truck stop. There's our 12th engine. Let's see what we have in the truck then. Move all the engines over as well. So I have a decent amount of batteries. I can do a battery bank with the level 6s and the level 5s for sure, plus two generator banks for various things. A bunch of extra brass as well, and a decent amount of extra assets. So it is a decent drive back to my base, but it's honestly not too far because I kind of looped around. So I'm going to drive back, and I'll talk to you guys when I get there. I also need handgun parts. Now, I know I only have a few parts here, but I also have a magnum I can scrap, should I want to. And I also know that the base I have way back over at the original Trader Gen, that has various weapon parts, which I didn't think I would really need, but... It might have handgun parts there, it might not, but it doesn't really cost me anything to go and check except some time, which you guys won't see anyway. So let me fly over and see if there's any handgun parts over there. Ah, uh, let's see. Ah, a couple of switches. Handgun part. Okay, enough to make another turret at least. I think I want five more, so I would need two more handgun parts. I'm sorry, little one. There's one more handgun part. I have some oil. Right, what about motion sensors? What did they take again? Same stuff. I'll make five. They take... 15 seconds each. Just put them in here. Let me get the generator bank. The battery banks. And do I have any relays at all? I have 19 of them. That is pretty good. I'll also need wiring tool. Put all my extra cobblestone away again. Okay, so the first generator bank is going to be dedicated to the turrets. And then we want a battery bank that this is going to connect straight into, which is actually going to be powering the turrets. 
but you can power slightly less, but not significantly less. I need a switch. Didn't I just pick up switches? Where'd they go? Oh, there they are. This, and then one around here. I can see no way this goes wrong. This will connect into the generator, and then from the switch into the battery bank. That means if we turn on the generator bank, it's not going to charge the batteries. Switch that on and it will slowly start to charge the batteries. I think you actually have to turn it on to charge the batteries. Yeah, see that value going up? That means it's charging. Then when we don't want that to be doing anything, we just turn that off, disconnect that, and then this will be working off of its own power. Power this into this switch, and this will be the switch that all the turrets are on. Now, I'm just gonna turn this on and let it charge the battery there because why not the other generator bank is going to be for just general power stuff like my house but it's also going to operate on a battery bank system bunch of these in here refuel that i'll need to make a couple of switches but that's fine i'll also want to get a few of these wire relays out and then smg auto turrets i want to get a couple of switches first though Two more should do at most. And then SMG. One, two, three, four. I wanted a fifth one, but I'll need to wait until I find that final handgun part. I'm not scrapping my SMG for it. Now here's the thing about relays. Relays and all power sources in this game can only accept one input. So I'm going to put one of these on each of them. And it'll make sense why in a second. Because they can only take one each. So, my turret battery bank. Or rather, not the battery bank, sorry. The switch. Is going to be connected to the power cables running south and north. We don't have to worry about wire management anymore because when you don't have a wiring tool you can't even see it anyway. So we know that the south and north relays are the ones that are going to be handling my turrets. The other bank however is going to be running on the east and west relays and those are going to be for transferring power to various light sources inside the house. And you know what I'm going to make some signs as well. There's my switches, I'll come back in a few minutes with the turrets. So then we do switch, switch, wire into you, you into this, this into this, this into all of the east-west relays. There we go, take our signs, just in case I forget it, I shouldn't. This is going to be for charging gate turret. This is going to be turret toggle. This one, if I remember correctly, is, yeah, that's charging gate utility. And this one is utility toggle. So this one will allow the power to go between the generator bank and the battery bank. This one will turn the utility stuff on and off. This one will allow the charging to go between these two, and this one will turn the turrets on and off. So, the next place that needs an SMG turret is of course going to be this corner over here, although there's a lot of trees in the way, so it might not be very effective, but it's fine. We'll work on that later. The next place is going to be the midpoint of this wall. Now, where's the centre of this? Because that is directly on top of the land claim block which is in the very center so that should be there oh yeah i can align myself with the radio beacon that is perfect line myself up turn this the right way place that and then the last one i want to place at the back i don't need a turret at the front because there's a door it's pretty easy to just run out and bonk them in the face when they're there it's when they're across the walls that gets annoying so let me start loading these up and setting them to target zombies remember to lock the ammo when you're using these or they won't work i obviously still haven't connected them to power though so that's the main issue Imagine how awful this would have looked in Alpha 20, back when light, when wires were just always visible, and now you put it away, and it's seamless. I think I need more light bulbs in this room, it's very big. And there we go, we have a fully, oh well, it doesn't really make sense when you hold a torch in your hands. We have a fully lit and painted house, I just need to put furniture in it. And it's fully defended as well, I'm surprised it hasn't shot anything yet. And honestly, I've been getting nothing but screamers this whole time, and now you decide to stop? Ahem. Well, that was pretty much immediate. 
Now, how good are they at actually dealing with them? Not very. I think they might not do enough damage. What I've generated here is an XP farm, not a defense system. Yeah, the turrets are actually not that good as a defense system. Because they... And I don't know if this is new. I certainly don't remember it. Uh, they seem to make screamers scream now. And of course, if zombies get too close to the base, they have a hard time dealing with them. But it has its uses. But yeah, it doesn't seem to kill the screamers fast enough to stop them from screaming. But did they always scream when turrets damaged them? I do not remember that being a thing. I'm crouched, let's see. Is it going to make the screamer scream? It didn't make the screamer scream, I don't think. But there is still the problem of it didn't even kill a screamer. Okay, so. Good news. The turrets don't seem to make the screamer scream, they must have just heard me. Bad news. At least on this side of the base, they don't seem capable of taking out the screamers fast enough. Maybe the trees need to be removed. Like, maybe the Screamers are getting too much of a run-up, because they have too much cover. Because they do seem to be summoning from over here right now anyway. It might be way more effective on the other sides, but we wouldn't know, because it keeps doing them here. Okay, so I've deforested this side of my base. That should help a lot with the turrets being able to deal with the Screamers, I think. Because the Screamers are going to spawn, you know, in view of the turrets and get blasted on their way in. This one has already used 60 bullets and it hasn't killed a single Screamer itself yet, I don't think, though. Hmm. Did it kill one? I had a steam pop up just as that thing died. So I don't... I don't know if I got XP for it, but... This one, with a clear view of the Screamer, actually did just deal with it. That seems like a much more beneficial way of doing this. So it isn't the turrets that caused the screams, it was me doing something that caused the scream. And the turrets can take down screamers, you just need to give them enough room to kill the zombies, because they're not going to one-tap them, presumably by design. Which means once I get that final turret set up, this should be a pretty secure base design, especially with a bunch of spikes around the side here. It'll just be the doors that are a weakness, and there's only three doors, two of them being on the same side anyway. But yeah, that's going to have to wait for the next episode. In the meantime, thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible, and thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode of Insane Nightmare.